Right, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the October meeting of the Divine Natural History Group. Before I introduce our speaker, I've got a few notices to hand out. Um, first of all, next month's lecture, which will be on Monday, the 6th of November, is going to be given by Elizabeth Mary Crane and entitled Four to Seven Years Landscaping in the UAE. Um, she arrived in 1977. Um, so that's the next next month's lecture. Um, field trips. We have several field trips already booked up and field trips going on in place. The field trip to Socotra is completely full. That's in November. Um, we have a field trip possibly in February 2024 to Egypt. Um, dates and everything else has got to be decided. Um, there's a field trip in April, 5th to 30th of April, to Greece, Peloponnese, which is half full. So people are interested. You've got the notice, have a look through that. Um, in June 2024, discovering Slovenia, and that notice has already gone out. So people, if they're interested in, you've got the notices, please have a think about it and contact Sonia. Contact Sonia. Um, I think that's all I've got to say for field trips. And if you want to the volunteers for the local trips, we have to bring the other trips in the morning. So people come uh, for trips and guys trips. There are benefits. What are the benefits? Tell me I'm already doing <laughs> <laughs> are that if you do the trip or you participate in whatever activity in financial international activities, people drive for the sale, etc. You have priority on the trips when the trips are full. Right. Okay. I'd now like to introduce our speaker, Hamid Khalid Arjumi, whose lecture you're going to be see is a tale of a boy's love for home and kite flying. Mohammed was brought up in Abu Dhabi as a young lad was very keen on learning and flying kites. And he's going to talk to us about his love for flying kites and also he's going to talk from a cultural point of view about life in Abu Dhabi and how it's involved. So without any more, I'd like to introduce Mohammed. So would you like to come and Thank you. to Mohammed? Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. My name is uh, Mohammed bin Jui, uh, an Emirati, was born in Abu Dhabi, uh, precisely in the outskirts of Abu Dhabi. Uh, so today, my talk is going to be uh, how Abu Dhabi evolved and how the family and our relationships and our culture has evolved over the years alongside the development of the city. Uh, basically, the main objective uh, here today is to show you a new version or another version of Animorati that, uh, to my knowledge, was not presented in the So I will start uh, from the beginning of the timeline, uh, where my grandfather and my parents, uh, how they were raised up, and uh, what was the culture by then. So uh, I would say in the late 70s uh, to early 80s, uh, Sheikh Zayed, uh, our late father, uh, Allah Rahman, may his soul rest in peace, he started granting uh, houses to local people in Abu Dhabi to move them from the seaside, from the mountains, from uh, all over the place, even in the outside, the outside the city of Abu Dhabi, to move them into communities and to houses that were built based on uh, certain architectural standards. And the my grandfather, my grandfather, uh, from my father's side and from my mother's side, uh, they are brothers. Uh, and they lived in a house, I couldn't find the picture, but they lived in a house that uh, looked exactly like one of these. And my father and my uncle, they lived in the same house, all together in that, in that house. So, my father and my uncle, two brothers, got married to two sisters and their cousins. They all lived in that house. Around 1990, uh, 1988, when they got married, the house was uh, small for everybody to live in. So they decided to move on their own. My father and my uncle would, uh, would both their, uh, their wives. 
and they moved to a city called uh, Jernia 4. Jernia 4 is a... Uh, Alexis, you want to admit anyone? Ah, uh, okay, you're doing it, okay. So on your way from uh, Abu Dhabi city towards Al Ain, there is a small uh, town on the right side called Jernia 4. And Jernia 4 is a, is a small town that was named, uh, Jern is a horn uh, of, of the deer, a horn of an animal. And I think there was a nook in that area, a little mountain, that's why they call it uh, Jern. And Yafur was the name of a man who was part of a group traveling from Abu Dhabi to Al Ain. I, I, I think it used to take uh, five to seven days or something, and they took a rest in this area. And there was a story of some sort, and it was named Garniapur. Garniapur was a, a very basic town, a very basic village. And, and people lived there since late 70s. Uh, I would say since exactly uh, 1974. Uh, many people, and the beauty of this area is that you can bring your construction material and your people, you can build the house, you own it. You don't need to buy land for a newlywed uh, people. It was cheap and affordable solution that they can just build and, and live there. So my father and my uncle with, uh, with my mom and my aunt, they came into this area and they lived there. I believe it was uh, at the late uh, 1980s, 88 or 89. So they came and they built a house uh, on the land amongst uh, many other, uh, other houses. And the houses by that time used to be uh, built with wood, small woods and uh, metal sheets and the pillars were built on wood. And prior to 1991, prior to the year that I was born, it was uh, almost 90% uh, built on wood and metal sheets, uh, something similar, what we call today slums. And to be uh, to be precise, and these are the people from that area who are building their houses. In this area, the people who lived there used to be, I would say, sixty percent Emiratis and forty percent were expats from uh, different parts, but mainly uh, from Arab and uh, from India, from Pakistan, around this area. I haven't seen uh, uh, people from uh, Europe or from overseas. This is a scene that I remember. I actually got these photos from, uh, from a gentleman who documented these photos and he shared them on the internet. And this is a photo that I remember and it's, 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 I know the place very well. That is another area, another part of the area, but I don't, uh, I don't remember. The time that I was, where I was born, 1991, it used to be a high. I would say the house was 30% based on uh, built on concrete and cement and, 70% was wood and metal sheets. So technically you hear your neighbor when he's shouting at his kids, you hear everything. Everybody knows everything about everybody. A small tight knit community uh, where if someone was, had any issues of some sort, everybody knows, nobody is shy about it. And everybody will start to help. And let me tell you a funny story. A month ago, uh, my client owns a cupcake factory. And every time I go to him, he load my cars with cartons of cupcakes. <laughs> Give it away to your people, to your neighbor. And this is part of our culture. You have something, you give it away. And I went to my neighbor here in Dubai, precisely. <laughs> and I knocked on their door. Uh, for a few days, I couldn't find the time, appropriate time to knock on the door. That day, it was 5 p.m. In my opinion, it was everybody's had their naps. And their 19 years old uh, boy came out and I said, this is for you and for, for the kids in the house. He took it from me and he looked at me like this, but we are okay. <laughs> <laughs> My brain could not comprehend the message that he told me. I immediately told him, I said, shame on you. I'm your neighbor next door. <laughs> Take it or I will tell your father. This is a gift from me. He said, ah, oh, it's a gift. He said, yes, it's a gift. <laughs> he thanked me and he took it. In my time, my mother would send me to my neighbor at three o'clock afternoon, we need some salt. <laughs> it was normal. They would give us ginger, salt, uh, whatever you want. It was normal, absolutely fine. We were true neighbors. And until today, uh, in some communities, it's still there. Uh, I, I don't like to be negative, but there are people who still have these values of the neighborhoods, of, uh, of the brother, brotherhoods between each other. Going back to Ganyafo. In Ganyafo, this was, uh, 
I would say three or four years before I was born. This was in Abu Dhabi, we lived here. When there was rain, uh, the kids would play. This was heaven for the kids, but misery for the parents who are responsible adults. But the houses would flood, there would be electricity outage, but these were difficult times for the people, but we had fun. We would go to the desert in the backside of the village. We would uh, light the bonfires and have stalks at night. We would play. We would have fun. But despite uh, the beautiful vibes in these areas, these are wooden houses. Uh, the time I was born to be uh, exact, to document it properly, it was, I would say, 10% better than what you see here, uh, where I was born. It was a little bit, uh, the houses are gathered together properly. Not, the wood is not scattered all over the place. But there was an issue. <laughs> Whenever a house catch fire, the whole neighborhood would be on fire. So there was one incident. I was, I believe, five years old. And I witnessed this with my eyes. There was a protocol among everybody in the, in the village. Whenever there is fire, there are three important things that people should follow. The first one is there is the leader and the, immediately someone will stand and act as the leader in that situation. And there will be three missions. The first mission is a group of people will go and get the kids. Then the second priority is the, is the ladies and the third priority is the adults and the seniors in the house. This is the people's mission. The second mission is the documents. As soon as they're fired, you hear them. The passport, the passport, the passport. <laughs> Why? Because your identity wasn't the passport. You, yes, it is registered in the big blue book in the, in, the, in the country, in the government, but there could be a chance that a paper was slipped away. What is your proof? It was your document, not like today. So people, the passport, and putting down the fire. So that the police comes after the, the firefighters come after 10 to 15 minutes to, to put down the fire. But by that time, there is a huge effort that has been put by the by the people to help each other. And in terms when in the times of the fire, you will see the real sense of the community. Everyone will start chipping in. This will open his door, this will give money, this will give food, whatever. But one time, one particular instance, one house caught fire, and 21 houses caught fire after that. 21 houses. And I saw that I was running around uh, just looking. I, I couldn't do anything. I was five or six years old. But I remember these voices. Uh, people, the lady, the passports, and everyone was running around. It was very long hours of fire. At the end, it was put down, and Sheikh Zayed uh, asked uh, everybody who owned these houses or people who lived there to move them to a temporary housing. And after that, he granted them housing in a different uh, in a different area. So, this these were uh, were the times. And in these days, I remember also uh, one of the one of the nice things that I observed, like a pattern. Every six months, I would say there would be a new trend, a new game in the neighborhood because no phones, no electronics, no exchange of information. One of the neighbors will go somewhere like Abu Dhabi city or we'll go to Al Ain or Dubai and we'll see something new and bring it to the, to the neighborhood. It will be the trend for two or three months and everyone like the glass balls. And <laughs> it, it, was, it was, you see everyone on the street for a few months doing that sport. And the, the beetroot uh, car, for some reason, every few months there would be a beetroot car. <laughs> beetroot in particular, and we drive around and we just give beetroot to everybody, and you would see the kids all red, eating beetroot and putting in bags and giving to their uh, families. Today I remember, I say, what was the story of the beetroot in particular? If you want a farm, you would plant other things as well, <laughs> not only beetroot, but this was uh, one of the mysteries. So uh, times pass uh, until the moment where. Uh, there was some rumors about a new house. And after the fire, the area or the village got the attention of uh, our late uh, father, Sheikh Zayed. He knew that there is a condition and there are people living in this area and it has risk of fire, has risk of, of these things. And then suddenly out of the blue, we sleep at night, we wake up next day, we see signs in front of our doors. 
and the signs either X or O. And it was a mystery. Everyone, what is this? At night, they put these signs and the rumor started. And everyone say, if you have an O, you will get the house. Mm -hmm. If you have an X, you will not get the house. <laughs> And the, the rumors, the mother started chit chatting. She got an O oh, next day, it was an X. And uh, now I, I remember, I look back at it, probably was a teenager who wanted to create a lot of art. <laughs> but eventually, we received a call uh, from the president's office and say, uh, You need to go finish the registration for a house. And they gave every house a house. But we had an issue. We lived there. With, with my uncle, two families. And to communicate at that time, and uh, when you grant these houses, they are limited to certain people, you have to wait for the next project. And my uh, uncle had bigger family, slightly bigger family than ours. So my father and my uncle decided, you go now, my uncle. He lived in Ashamkha, and we lived in uh, another area called the Shwam, 15 minutes drive. Uh, we rented the house there, and, uh, and we moved there. So I'll show you last uh, photo from uh, from Garniapur. and this is one of the one of the scenery of the houses. That was a cinema. Who would build a cinema in a remote area from our village to go there? You have to walk in the sand to reach to the street and to see. Then there used to there used to be a cinema. I haven't been there, but we used to go there, and uh, as children, we were not allowed to go inside. <laughs> Because it was abandoned by that time, by 1994 or 1995. It was switched to a wedding hall. And then from there, they switched it to uh, another abandoned, again, another abandoned uh, house. Behind our, uh, behind our village. Yeah. Thank you. So these photos are from the 1990s. From, from 1990s, yes, yes. This photo is, is not, uh, it's from the internet, but I brought it here to deliver the message about the sand and, uh, and, and what was behind our village. In that area, in the whole area, it used to be, uh, it used to be uh, salt sand, salt water. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, it's called salt marshes. Sub -car, sub -car. Sub -car. Yeah, we say subka in English. Sub <laughs> ah, okay, I was searching for translation of subka. Oh, okay, I, I, it's, it's subka. A lot of a lot of it in the back. And wherever you go, if you dig a little bit, you will find salt water, and the salt will come out. And there is also next to it there was the sand. Uh, I tried to uh, to to bring this as close as as possible. But it used to be, and some areas used to be dangerous. You can go deep in them. And this is another uh, another photo, also uh, in the similar uh, similar nature. And when the houses was given to the locals to move to new communities, there was another funny story of one man. Before this housing uh, grant started, one man invested about a million dirham in his house. And that area was not for, uh, for construction. The area was bad. It was salt, it was water, it was, but he couldn't, he, he thought it was the right decision and he invested a substantial amount of money. And even now, one million is a, is a decent amount of money. But back then it was, I would say double or triple the value of it today. And everyone moved and they asked him, come take this house. He said, I don't want, I just put my, my life saving into this. I cannot just abandon it and go. And everybody moved and that man, the, his house started drowning in the area. Exactly, yeah, exactly in this area. He, he built a ridge around it, so it protects. And he tried, he tried, and even he built a street from the main road to enter to his house. And for about two years, he was living alone, around him kilometers of nothingness. And he was so persistent. And then Sheikh Zayed one time was passing close to that area. And he said, what's going on with this house? <laughs> alone, in the, alone in here. And the water all around his house. I remember, I saw it with my eyes. They said, this guy has paid this much. And he said, give him what he paid and give him the house. <laughs> and eventually he moved, uh, he moved to, uh, to a new house. This was one of the, one of the stories.
After that, we, my uncle moved to this new uh, community, Ashamka, and we rented the house in this area. When we uh, rented the house, it was, I would say, three bedrooms. It was me and my other two siblings. But for us, it was a palace. Coming from there, we had a garden. I planted uh, grass. I planted tomato. I, I did so many things in that area. And then from there, I started building the kites. Uh, my uncle told me, we used to build kites from the palm tree stems, flower, and newspaper. How to build it? Please tell me. My uncle is a military man. He has no time for joy or for fun or love. This is the hint. You do it on your own. I started experimenting, experimenting with the kites, with the kites. How can I fly? I would say more than 20 tries. I tried to get it up in the sky. I couldn't. And eventually, I found a way. It was using the, using the stem of the palm tree and the newspaper, uh, flower, and the thread or string. And the, the palm tree stem usually is thicker, the diameter is thicker from one side and then it goes smaller, just like any stem. So I would brush it until it become even. And then I would put the newspaper, cut it evenly, choose the right photo of Chef Zai so it can go up <laughs> to the sky. I had obsession with this, putting your name up. Even in the streets, when they were building the streets around the area, I would write my name and my family name on the rocks and, <laughs> and put it down just to put the, the history. And I, I started making them uh, one time, second time, third time, until I managed to uh, fly it up in the sky. And it was so beautiful. Slowly, 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 I learned how to balance it. What are the issues that you can have? And it will start drifting right and left, right and left. After the uh, same amount of tries. And then the distances started to increase. Until the point where I used to fly it, where it disappears in the sky. Made from a newspaper. <laughs> it disappears in the cloud. And when, we, when I bring it back, uh, slowly, nobody is giving uh, giving me any care or attention from the neighborhood. But slowly, when it started going up, everyone started gathering around. It's a newspaper. And to take it so high, it would disappear. And then when I try to pull it down, because at six, we have to be home, <laughs> it, it, would, it would take me so long. And one time I went faster, it broke because of the water. It's wet on the top of the newspaper and it broke. So I started going. Sometimes it take me up to 50 minutes to bring it down slowly, 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 and bring all water on top of it. Then I started doubling it up. Uh, it, it was uh, it was magical, magical, uh, magical moments. This was uh, in 2022. I decided to do it again, <laughs> and it was the same style. My wife was taking a video, the same style, but I made a mistake. Instead of this uh, arc, I put it in the front instead of the instead of the back. And it started going right and left, right and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't balance it. This is, uh, this is a video also from last year. You see, <laughs> I couldn't get it right, but uh, it's flew. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Even the tails, all from the newspaper. So one day, I was uh, here is what I showed you with this, in this area, and, and this precise in this area. And this line, for I would say four months, Sheikh Zayed, and in particular, the one particular month he used to be, he used to drive in this area every single day. Sheikh Zayed, every single day. And I would be playing outside and nobody. I come from school at 2, 2 p.m., I have my lunch, and I go out. Playing, playing, because six o'clock exactly or five thirty depends on the sunset. I have to be home, and that would be playing. And first day, I see a fast Mercedes, black Mercedes, with seven cars behind them, driving by, and it was not a normal scene. You see, every day, first day, second day, third day. Then I decided to get closer to the street to see who's inside this car. And one day, I was on the street, and exactly on this point. I see other three or four ladies came and joined me from the locals. They heard the rumor that Sheikh Zayed is coming in this area. And uh, it was true. We stopped the car, 
front of the ladies that came to him. They're asking him for one for house, one for some situation. Or every single question they ask him, probably four or three ladies, every single question. He just hears the story. He look at the paper, same what you say. He doesn't even read it, it's funny. Check, check, sign, sign, sign. And then he called one, uh, one man from his uh, crew and he said, uh, take all the paper as soon as possible. And they finished. Came my turn. <laughs> we were living in a rent house. And I, he come to me, how are you? I said, good, alhamdulillah, how's your balance? Good. And what do you want? Tell me what you have, what you, what you wish. And I said, salamatik. Salamatik means your health. He said, uh, that's all. I said, that's, I said, mashkur. Give him halwa. <laughs> they gave me a plate of uh, nahiyani dessert, sweet. <laughs> I came home. Sheikh Zayed gave me this. Sheikh Zayed? <laughs> Until today, they ask me. Was it him really? I said, ask our neighbor, Umflan. <laughs> she knows. <laughs> and uh, we got a house in this area and we moved to Ashanka. Uh, and this time, uh, there is something that uh, worth mentioning. Uh, Sheikh Zayed was a visionary and he was doubted in many occasions. He say his vision, it's normal. Any leader will get challenges. And people would say, this cannot be done. And some people would believe, some people would challenge this, uh, these visions. Sheikh Zayed decided to plant in Abu Dhabi. And he, he launched a campaign to plant, 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 plant. He brought consultants. This is, this is, excuse me, this is a famous story. Consultants came and they investigated the land. They did the survey. They said, you cannot plant anything here. It was dry, salty, only palm trees and in some areas. He went nevertheless and he invested a huge amount of money, plant to the people. He gave us farm, he gave my uncle, our neighbors, Plant whatever you can, whatever uh, harvest you, you get, we will sell it. It's guaranteed. Just to support. There were some challenges. There were things that he was pushing so hard for. He wanted to see it come to life. And he did. After that, things continued and things uh, got, but he proved his point. The second point was, and when we lived here and in those areas, when the new project started coming to life, there was uh, I remember when I used to go play. When I go to play outside of the desert, alone sometimes, I go with hike for hours. And uh, funny story, a little secret, I'm lactose intolerant. And my mom would give me milk in the morning, and I would go far to play, like half an hour. And then suddenly, I start running back home because of my stomach is upset. And 20 years later, I discovered that I'm not But the whole sand was rock sand. And people were challenging these projects. And they say, uh, nothing cannot be built on this. There are cavities down. And people who are not even educated are speaking about these things. Cavities under this, as soon as the rain comes, the houses will collapse. I hear all these words. And it's true, it's a challenging. You see in some areas, it's subha, uh, salty. And there were some challenges. But the projects went, and I saw it with my own eyes every day at 4.30. After Al-Asr prayer, his car would come. He was checking the projects, and new project in Shamfa. Every single day, and for maybe six months or four months, uh, he will cut for a few days, and then he will come and cut for a few days, and then he will come. These are, uh, these are the sceneries that were there in the whole area. I have seen the, the houses in these areas we used to play. All these became new projects, new communities. And one of them is this project, Ashamka. This is where my family house uh, is in Ashamka. I will show you now. Every uh, family uh, got a house. Some families, they got a land with uh, zero interest uh, loans to build on top. This one also, this is my family house. And now it's being also renovated. We have these. Now, if you go back to Garniapu and compare with this, it's a totally different scene. And all of this in 30 years, in my short life. People say, these are people who are born rich. Some people are born rich in this country. And this is the new profile that I want to show you. Some people are hardworking individuals and emeralds. And it was not because of the oil. It was because of the vision of the leaders. We didn't see the oil. We, we never touched it. But our life has improved. 
the blue books I was mentioning, last year I was in East Europe and I needed to finish uh, a notary uh, service in, in, in the government. And he opened the blue book. I saw it and he started writing down and he started writing down. Our cards used to be green cards for the hospital, for the health cards. It used to be written by hand and the uh, lamination on top. You go to the hospital. Literally, if you can write your name, you can write on a green card and you will get service. And when we go there, we present it to the lady and the reception. She will open the book. She will write your name. Go get treatment. Slowly, slowly, we got plastic cards. Slowly, slowly, we got uh, the application. Now with the UAE bus, you can finish everything uh, without even holding any card on your phone. All of this has happened uh, in a short uh, span of time. I've seen uh, countries that has oil, who, were, who found oil in them way before Emirates, way before Emirates. And they were rich, and there were countries that, has, that had uh, gold toilets. Uh, probably we all know this. And they still have some challenges, they still have this. It's all about the leaders. That's why I personally, uh, I have blind faith in the leaders. Whatever it is, we sign, you make the decision with full uh, power of attorney. We don't need, because I have personally seen this. And on top of this, all this involvement, uh, probably my dear friend uh, Alexis can, uh, can also uh, comment on this. We, we were born in Gernia Four, and now, 20, uh, 30 years later, uh, now we have ventures in artificial intelligence and big data. I personally offer these services, intelligent automation. We deal with it a lot. We deal with uh, telecommunications infrastructure. If you say about these things 30 years ago, 20 years ago, people will not believe that this land will have access to all these, uh, all these opportunities. So uh, what the message that I want to say is this land has hardworking people. In 2015, in April 30th, 2015, I started my, my, my first company. I worked very hard on that company, on my own, single shareholder, put everything I have on that company. I started it with, with $100,000. And in six months, I had a team of five, and another six months team of 10. At the end, I went out of business. There were some challenges, I closed it. A few years later, now I opened a new venture also, but in the technology, specific, specifically in technology. There are people who hustle, who work hard, and who reach their dreams. And the opportunities are not for certain people in the country. Some people, uh, they have access to opportunity faster than others, but if you work hard, you can get where, uh, where, you, want to, uh, where you want to reach. These are some of the, of the thoughts I have uh, over the years. Sheikh Mohammed Bar Rashid, one of the projects, Ministry of Interior, Sheikh Saif Bin Zayed, and the President, and uh, this was with, uh, I was the host with uh, Mikhail Sakashvili, former president of, uh, of Georgia, uh, throughout his whole tour in Abu Dhabi. Uh, all these are uh, access, to, uh, access to opportunities. If you work hard, my father was a businessman. He started probably nine or 10 businesses uh, in different sectors, all traditional businesses. And he closed, he closed, he closed, he closed, he closed. 20 years ago, he opened a business and thankfully it kicked, uh, it kicked off. And until now it's, uh, it's working. But uh, from Garniapo to all these uh, ventures today and all these, and what the message that I want to say is all of this happened over uh, 30 years time. That was my, uh, my message and my uh, experiences I want to share. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if there any, uh, any questions. I think this is the, this is the protocol, right? Yeah. Is the place where you live this house somehow? It's called? Uh, which place where I was born? No, no, no. The house where you showed that this. Yeah, the house. house somehow? Yes. Asham. Yes. yes. What's the meaning of? This, uh, uh, this, this uh, yeah, yeah. Ash means uh, the high, ah. but for uh, for a lady, 
that uh, she has uh, pride. Uh -huh. Yeah, like she has high class, a sham. Yeah. And another question, uh, because you said that before it was like um, this community mostly, you know, Emiratis and so on. This Al Shamha, it's like mixed right now, or it's mostly still like all your neighbors uh, or Emiratis? Uh, it is uh, still. But uh, if your neighbor was loud at night here, you, know, you complain about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not like uh, that time. There are still the family spirit and the neighbors and everything and Eid and all of these things, but uh, little, little space now. Okay. Like in the past also, I remember my neighbor, if he, if he slapped my face, if I did something wrong, I come home. If I complain, I will get another one. <laughs> I, would, I would keep quiet. So... He doesn't know what I did. You know, that was uh, your uncle, but today uh, we'll end up in the court, <laughs> which is right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, anyone else, thank you so much for your time. Has anyone else, any of your friends, have they seen you flying kites and have they been inspired to take it up as well? Or are you the only one? Uh, I was the only one in the neighborhood I remember. I remember my cousin tried. Uh, but uh, it takes a little bit of effort and uh, dedication to manage to uh, to fly it and to get it up in the sky. Have you taught this to your children or your friends? No, I haven't. Uh, last year I tried. My uh, my daughter was uh, too young, and my older daughter uh, she's autistic, and uh, it would be difficult for her to uh, to play or to fly a kite. But I can't wait for the younger one to, uh, to grow up a little bit and to, and to see it. to India during the kite flying season? Uh, no, I haven't. I've been to India a couple of times, but not in the kite flying season. I would love to uh, to know about uh, kite flyers. Not all of us. <laughs> <laughs> not all of us. Oh, really? <laughs> it's really so uh, We can do uh, one day yeah. out and uh, share knowledge. Yeah. Why do you make our own kites? And, uh, with all kinds of papers, whatever was available. Yeah. Very similar to what I did. Yes, yeah. I'm saying in maybe late 60s and 70s. Yeah, early 70s. I would love to uh, <laughs> to experience, to exchange knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. So did you, sorry. You started with paper. Did you try it out afterwards with other material or have you always done it with newspapers? Well, always done it with newspapers. Uh, Sheikh Hamad bin Zayed say that the way is giving us water and and harvest. We don't change it. <laughs> uh, so this is I heard it from him himself. <laughs> What's the actual name of where you were born? The name I didn't quite catch the name of that village. The name of the place is called Garniapur. I will send you. Uh, I will send you the name. Yeah. Now there is. The whole area was uh, was demolished, and they built a new community called Fatma bin Mubarak, the mother of uh, of the president. Then they built a new community and also uh, local housing uh, grants. We are talking about time scales. I lived I lived in Dubai for a few months in two thousand one, yeah. and there was the Ritz Carlton and the Hilton. That was it. And then there was. Um, there, there was nothing much. We came back in 2006. There was the marina. There was Arabian ranches. <laughs> yeah. So in 2001, you said? Yeah. It's only in five years. In five years. Yeah. They had the marina. They had Arabian ranches. They had springs. They had meadows. And those places, those areas in Dubai did not exist in 2001. It was all Jumeirah 1, two, 3, and then Sakim 1, two, 3. And that was more or less it. But... Everything has, has changed. In so the past, in Abu Dhabi, uh, not even in the past, and, and when I was in college in uh, 2012, 2013, if I have something in the government in Abu Dhabi, in Dubai, I, I don't know anybody. All my family in Abu Dhabi, no relative, not single one in Dubai. Only maybe uh, someone, a teenager, has an apartment somewhere for the weekend, but other than that, nobody. In Abu Dhabi, before I go to finish government transaction, I would call a friend. And take a token for me, or he will finish the whole transaction. I will just go take the paper and go. But now I called my friend in Dubai, head of Dubai licensing, two weeks ago. I called him, Mohammed, I need to finish the license. And he said, Why? Go to them and they will finish it. 
So it's better I mean, to fast and a confusion sometimes. Uh, he said, no, if there's a problem, tell me. You go and finish it in one day. <laughs> this culture has gone, everything uh, has changed. And sometimes we are we are stuck in, in the past, but the things are wrong. Is that because there's so many more people here who are one who want the same service, but maybe don't have the same connections? And so there's just so many people now living in the UAE from all different countries. Yeah. Is uh, that, do you think that's why it's become more difficult to to use your contacts and your no, no, the, the whole culture has changed. Has changed. And uh, because I was busy, I called. And I, it's, it's a high contact in my car, you know, I thought I would use it. And, but uh, it was pointless. I felt shy at the end because literally in one day, finished the whole thing. Uh, apply, finish, finish, done, done, done. It's the whole process is done. So now you are even shy to call and say, oh, I have this, I need a favor. And the whole process is clear. The fees are there. The demand of the country, demand of the people. Use the special ones. No, so easier. I was shy. He's a good friend of mine. Uh, Emirati, we sit together, we play pool together. I was shy. After this happened, and when, how he rejected me and he said, go to the... <laughs> I looked at myself and said, what am I doing? Why did I call? But it was, uh, it was done smoothly and easily. The whole services are documented for everybody to use. There is no need for, uh, for back channels or for anything. In the past, when I saw this with my eyes, also in Garniapur and in Banyas around the area, one time there was a police car and he got stuck in the sand. And people were standing and laughing at him. The policeman used to be a villain in these uh, outskirts. <laughs> like he's the one who's giving fines and, and those days. But Sheikh Saif bin Zai, the Minister of Interior, changed this culture. And there was another video on social media where people came out of their cars to help a police car. This culture has changed completely. The policeman came part of the community now. It's not, uh, it's not the villain. First, they changed the colors of the branding of the police. It was red in the past in Abu Dhabi. You see it, we call it Marl yeah. because it's white and red. It's changed completely. Now it's, uh, it's blue, it's friendly, it's a community. People respect the police, people appreciate the police. They feel safe when they see a police car. Uh, and Abu Dhabi. Yes, fines are there, but uh, but the whole culture has changed. Yeah. Yes, please. Well, your father built a house out of wood, and then you see him uh, corrugated it like that. Yeah. Yeah. Did anyone, did anyone in Jordan before make uh, houses out of uh, hema, out of parasti or anything like that? Or was it always, or did you know anyone in Abu Dhabi back then who made a house, who had a house? Of a Barasti? Uh, ba Barasti? Yeah. Arish. Arish. Yes. Arish. Oh, I, I didn't witness Arish. I I didn't. Didn't. I no, I was, uh, was the new generation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you were the wooden. Uh, the wood, yes. So, okay. yes, yes. Did anyone use the uh, cinder blocks in the uh, jungle floor or not? And, and uh, what they were using? The, the, um, I don't know. Cinder blocks, the uh, the cement, yeah, yeah, the bricks, yeah, yeah. 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 They they use, for example, in our house, it had uh, uh, four rooms, uh, four rooms and one living room and one majlis. Uh, the majlis it was uh, with bricks. Okay. The rooms inside, some of them has wood, some of them has bricks. Uh, it was a mixture. Yeah, outside the house, all the. Uh, all the uh, wood, mm -hmm. uh, all wood, uh, outside the doors, only the door is metal, but the, the gates, the pillars, all built on, uh, on wood. And your father built it himself? Or did you have to hire somebody to help him? Uh, I believe my father and my uncle hired, uh, hired someone to, uh, to build it with them. But definitely uh, they were, uh, especially my uncle, I'm sure he had his uh, cup of tea and watching every nail. <laughs> he was that kind of about the terrible fires that happened. Yeah. Um, how did they? How did they start? Was it from cooking? Was it from cigarettes? Was it what? What kind of? Because I, I, I had a, one experience of a fire in an apartment block yeah. just after I got married. I remember it was three or four days after, and I smelled the smoke, and I woke up. My wife had just got married, and I did. We didn't have any children. Yeah. To think about, but we did what you said. 
we've got the card keys, the documents, and the negatives of the wedding photos. <laughs> and we literally put our clothes on and went downstairs, and the fire brigade came, and we were okay. I think one person tragically was killed. Yeah. Um, but but this seemed to be a common a common thing um, in your community. What would typically start a fire? Would it be cooking? Uh, it would have been cooking. It would have been uh, uh, now when you are asking about uh, what ignites the fire. I think there was there was some reason I have in my mind, but I cannot recall it. But it, there, there was a discussion about the reason and what ignited it, the oil or cooking or something. But uh, it could be for any silly reason, as silly as a cigarette. Yeah. Yeah. But in this case, yeah. people yeah. died. Because there was a, somebody had fallen asleep yeah. and the cigarette was... Yeah. 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 But in that time, I'm sure they couldn't figure out the reason. But uh, it was uh, unfortunate. People died there as well. In those days, what were you using for fuel in your kitchens? Kitchen gas. Yes. Gas, yes. gas, yes. At that time, there was gas. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, we were good with the gas and oil. <laughs> <laughs> we had access to it early. <laughs> Have electricity also? Yes, we had electricity, but there was outage every couple of weeks, every three weeks, there would be uh, electricity outage. And air con? Yeah, huh? What about the man who built his house in that difficult place? Hmm. Did he have electricity or a generator? Uh, good question. Probably they built it in the day or something. But I'm sure there was, uh, during the construction of these houses, either a neighbor would lend them a cable or they would have built it in the morning. Even generator, definitely not there. So it was too expensive to hire a generator. But when he was living there, you said he lived there for two years on his own. Oh, the, oh, the, the house in the back. The, the solar the house. Oh, yeah, that, that was for sure he had electricity or something. I'm not sure from where, but uh, he lived there for two years. Uh, two or three years even. Uh, that would that that was a funny thought. When you see it from far, it's like in the movies, you know, in the novels, long street, and then you find this house, <laughs> like a hidden garden somewhere, alone with the water all around his house. Salt and water, these marshes. But uh, this is your house. Still? Uh, yeah, this is my family house, not this one, the one I showed uh, afterwards. In this size of building, how can we ask how many people might live here? Yeah, like this, this, uh, this house has uh, four rooms upstairs, uh, four rooms downstairs, two majlis, and uh, probably 10 or 11 rooms. Yeah. And uh, this, this, this has changed. We couldn't believe it. For us, especially uh, our families, when we came from that area, it was uh, heaven, completely heaven. Playing, you have all this area. And uh, last year, uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed uh, allowed every house who has corner uh, house can increase nine meters on both sides. So even increased and gave loans of zero interest to build even extensions of the houses. Some people built. Uh, same like this, two times around it. Yeah. Yeah. Keep the, the kids around, you know. Maybe I ask, I don't know if it's possible. Is there still, are you, are you living in more families and in one single house? Do you like like this, or you, every house has its own family and let's say? Depends, okay. the, depends on the relationship between the wife and the mother in law. <laughs> but but it's still there. All the all the parents are fighting with their kids to stay. Like my parents just built uh, I don't know if it's visible in the photo. Uh, yes, that, that house there on that side has uh, two apartments down, and now they will build two on top for all the kids to live in. Uh, in the How many generations would be there? Three generations? Uh, in the house? Yeah. No, now my parents, my grandmother, and my kids. Wow. Yeah. Four. Yeah, four, four. Yes, yes, yes. All living in, in this house. Are you still friendly with your neighbors, or is there more distance? I mean, the village feel. Our neighbor here, for example, uh, is friendly. Uh, this, our neighbor in particular, is too friendly. 
Yeah, he would be outside the house every day in the morning you're sitting outside to get a good breeze he would be passing by uh, he would see someone small drop the cigarette like that vibe you know but he's a good genuine uh, genuine man and if there was uh, any issue this is how we describe a good neighbor a neighbor that if there was enough times you will put your daughters in his hand and you will you, they will be safe that's the kind of the man he is yeah, that's how that's the, the definition. The definition of a good neighbor. Yeah, and he is uh, thankfully. Yeah. So it must must be difficult for you to think uh, of living in a, in a Western country because it's a very particular uh, culture. This one. Uh, for me, it was uh, it was difficult, but I was always uh, very adaptable. Uh, wherever I go, I, I met with the people. And actually one of the one of the first trips that I have taken was to Las Vegas with the government. Why? <laughs> <laughs> with the government. I was uh, it was 2012, it was 14, 13. And uh, I was sent for a conference called Black Hat in Las Vegas. And uh, it was uh, mind blowing for me. And I couldn't sleep two days before and two days after and uh, preparing everything. And I went to Las Vegas. I stayed in Mandalay Bay, uh, all paid for. And I had pocket money. And like if it was and someone else, he would have a blast. But I got to the hotel, I slept, I tried to sleep day and night. Then I, I couldn't uh, uh, comprehend what's going on around. And I remember we, I used to go and they give me software from the conference. I go back home, I test it, and I break my software. I need to format it again. So I remember I went to Walgreens on the strip at one in the morning to buy empty CDs. <laughs> the Las Vegas strip, and there was some Kuwaiti or Saudi girls. And they were judging me laughing. I was wearing my hotel flip gloves and buying CDs and hard disk at Las Vegas in the morning at one. So th that was uh, funny, uh, but over the years, I adapted, I understood the different uh, cultures, different uh, opinions, different perspectives. And uh, there are things that shock us. It's like our neighbor kid, <laughs> we are okay. So it's totally, uh, totally different and new. But we adapt. Yeah. Have you ever thought about writing a book? Because there are a lot of different writers who are writing a lot of the Emiratis will talk about you know, their family histories, but it doesn't seem that anybody's writing anything. And I think a lot of it's going to get lost. Uh, yes, uh, actually, I always thought of these things as uh, common sense, you know. For me, it was nothing, something of interest, like my memories. Uh, but they will get lost. They will get lost, yes. Uh, but when, uh, when uh, thankfully, Alex has and uh, you guys and Michelle, you invited me to come and speak. Uh, I thought about it, and I see Dubai National History Group, and uh, I thought, what can I bring to the table? Even today, when I came, I, I had a talk with uh, several uh, several few few guys, and uh, it was a lot of scientific talk, a lot about history, a lot about natural history. But for me, it was memories. And then I thought, you know what? Let me just come. They, you. You told me it's going to be a friendly talk and just share your opinions. I shared my opinion. And uh, uh, I'm glad I did. Uh, but, but a book uh, about it, uh, I am not sure. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's memories. Maybe if there was something uh, of significance or something that was documenting apart from a family history, why not? Yeah. How are your children doing? Huh? Did you have your children? Yeah. You know, Believe me, I, I keep a lot of things for them. I'm a hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many things I keep. No, they will look and they will like this because when I was little, my father didn't have things. But when he showed me something as little as a notebook where they write numbers, I was, I keep it and I keep memory of it. So now whatever I see, I just keep it in the, in the drawer. And now my wife started throwing things away <laughs> without me knowing. <laughs> and I know that there are things that are missing, but I don't know what are they because. <laughs> yeah. Yes, my family in Abu Dhabi, and I live in Dubai as well. Do you live in Abu Dhabi? Uh, I have a house there. You do? Yeah. 
from to to Abu Dhabi. Evacuate from where? Yeah, from from yeah. Iran. Iran. We yeah. were evacuated to Abu Dhabi. Okay. And uh, it was so different. It was so different. But we had all our neighbors were local neighbors, and it was amazing. Which area of Abu Dhabi? We lived in Batim, but not quite near the walls, but further back from the walls. Fantastic. Yeah, really, really amazing. Not far from the prison. Actually, because there was a lot going on at the prison, yeah. you know, with the lights and the... Nice. But very, very interesting, particularly because of all the local neighbours and everyone. Allard, who was everyone in the division. Lovely family, very, very welcoming. Wonderful. I'm glad you found them. Yeah. It's very good. Yeah. And uh, something worth mentioning. We had a talk uh, today with uh, Barry. I had a talk with... Uh, for several people, honestly speaking, this country wouldn't have been uh, where it is today without uh, people like that. Uh, people who uh, contributed to the success of the country, to the education of the country, of the nations, of generations. Uh, so from uh, one Emirati guy, big thank you. <laughs> Thanks. We, we appreciate you. Your, your experiences so warmly and humbly. Um, just a, a question, but just on Michelle's topic, we've also got the experience of um, Dr. Apple in Abu Dhabi, who wrote a few books sharing what might have been thought of as being kind of trivial or smaller matters, but it's actually one way of cherishing those records. We could speak afterwards, but he's, he's made books about, um, let's say, spectacular observations reported in newspapers over different decades. Yeah. And he was using that to actually inform the Dubai police for during as an education resource to, to portray how articles of importance could be written. So he's using that style of writing initially to help inform the police with the cadets. And then over time, he built up such an interesting collection of stories and anecdotes about things happening in the UAE yeah. that were important at the time, but also Kind of special and might make you smile or think uh, and these are things which at the time you might have said not so important or not of merit but now that collection is actually really sweet to have and i'll show you the book the next time we're, uh, yeah, we're yeah, yeah. i did have a question though yeah which is you shared about growing up and you talked about urban life yeah. you'll have heard uh, sonia organizes many of our wonderful excursions around the uae do you have maybe some specific memories of your own excursions outside of the city? The things where you went on, on hikes, or boat trips, mm -hmm. as a youngster or more recently? I went to, uh, to the uh, salt uh, marshes. I went in that area sometimes for hours. And I saw the Afghani laborers in Abu Dhabi. They have uh, something that they make it very special. The, you know the big uh, Coca-Cola bottle, plastic one? Mm -hmm. They wrap it with the, the fabric from the rice, the rice sack. Mm -hmm. they, they break it and they wrap it uh, around with it and they dump it in water. It keeps the water cold. I watched them, the Pakistanis and Afghanis, and I made it. And I take it with me for uh, for a few hours after the work the cinema and the uh, juice area. And I will reach actually next to... Uh, uh, here's the first map. This area, us. Yeah, this is uh, Ganya Hall in this area, and uh, behind it here you see there is an um, airfield, uh, military airfield. This is where my uncle used to walk, and I was I would walk all this area close to here for a few hours, and. Uh, to me, these sceneries were very beautiful. I would see all these salt lakes and uh, and the dunes in some areas. Uh, I would go sometimes with a, with a friend, but I always had the challenge of finding someone to go with me because I was very high up. And I go and I get lost, but when I come, I always have a story for my parents, so they, they let me in. And in the Shamha, in the Shawama, 
in this area, all this area has no no people live, uh, living uh, living there. This is our lovely Dubai uh, road. No, this is a way far coming from Saudi Arabia, uh, coming to Bariyas and the Shawarma and this area, but all this area was new. Uh, we, uh, I walked mostly all this area where this, the, the, the sand rocks, scenery, sand. Uh, I've seen all this area. I walked most of it, this area, especially this area. And when we moved to uh, Shantla, as soon as they gave us the house, we immediately moved there, so we don't pay the next month rent. <laughs> we we moved to that house, and also it was empty, empty places. Today there is uh, this area where many of my cousins are granted land here now. They started building their uh, their houses, and I'm sure next few years this area, that area, all will be uh, will be just like Dubai. Dubai used to be. Uh, very far from Abu Dhabi, but now Dubai is just you drink uh, one espresso and you find the uh, last exit in front of you. Yeah. It's about the community changing very much. Yeah. It's now that for one year in like, <laughs> um, and we had a bright green plot of the foundation in there, and then an apartment block. We used to look across this beautiful room to New York Island, it's just a single sandbag. So we had a friend with a terrible boat, which would break every time. We played in the water by the new island. And then we came back, we had to be, came back in 2009 to the And it was completely different. The new island was covered in buildings just in that short time. It was completely different, a really different feel. And did you come first? Uh, 1997, 1998. <coughs> um, and, and yeah, and like the journey back then from and that was the first thing we see. <laughs> yes, we were little. We, we sleep in the car. I always tell everybody, what is the name of the guitar? It was hard rock. We sleep, we wake up, we sleep as kids in the car. We get bored until we see the guitar. We see the guitar. Where was that? I remember that. Yeah. And most of our neighbors who are lovely local families, quite sure. Um, but one lady in this room, which is a big boss at that show, and she came and brought it to our house and gave us a gift to say, Well, and she said it's from the farm. So to an English person, farm is like green and yeah. animals, you know, plants. And I couldn't imagine what this farm could possibly look like in a desert. Um, but she promised to take us one day. But, but lastly, my daughter was nine and she needed to do a project at her school. She needed to find a local person and ask them about their memories. How had Dubai changed from when they were a child to now? I'm like, I don't know. How can I possibly? So I asked my neighbor who called Amanda, said, could I possibly, could we possibly come? Could you come? Could my daughter ask her just a few questions? I've got four women, how annoying. And she said, please, she said, come tomorrow at 4 30. And so we came and left her. She invited maybe 10 of her local friends. And my little girl sat there asking very silly childish questions, and they asked beautifully in a friendly way. But at the end, she said, she said, you know, it used to be like this. In the morning, you would do the chores, you would look after the children. But from 4.30 every day, every woman would open the gates and it meant open house. And everybody would move around and visit and talk and share food. So that's how it used to be. And now it's not so open anymore. Everything's changed. Things have changed. Uh, yeah. yeah. And she missed that. She looked back to that time to say when, when it was like a local community and people shared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She felt very yeah. privileged. She was so kind and welcome within. Um, yeah. I was uh, having a meeting with Alexis uh, the two two nights ago. We were uh, chit chatting and uh, brainstorming a few things, and one of the things we were discussing about, uh, not related about the, the neighbors of the housing, but in the business. The use in the past, uh, I that was the time before I was born, where uh, people would have their uh, shops. And you will find one market where many people have the same shops, the same kind of uh, shops. This one sells rice, this one sells rice. But all of them would have habit in the morning. When they start their work, they put a chair in front of the shop. And people would come. When, they, when the customer comes to the shop, he will sell him the goods that he wants to, 
to sell it. First customer of the day. After the customer leaves, he will put the share back uh, inside the shop. The second customer comes in and he wants some. Even though he has the thing, he can sell it to him. He would go outside and see any chairs outside. And he would tell him, go to this shop, he will give you uh, yeah. this product. And he will send him there because his uh, neighbor still haven't started, uh, hasn't broke the first. Uh, and he would send him there. Until everybody has their chairs inside, they will start selling. So th these things, when people say, oh, the things, you, people are just negative, things hasn't changed, it's just we are different, busy people. This, oh, this, is, this was a beautiful thing to do. This was uh, giving your brother what, what could have been food for your children, but giving it to him. That's the first chapter for your book. That's yeah. what you saw in that first chapter. You must write about the Beatrice. Yeah. That was Beatrice, yeah. Inspiration books are written for Beatrice. She'll have to write it down. The the Beatrice. My mother starts to write her family history about five, six years ago. And she keeps saying to me, her mother now passed away a long time ago. But she said, I wish I asked my mother about these details. Mm -hmm. They had an old box. We had it in our house for years, an old like chest, a trunk. Somebody had been to America a hundred years ago, but had come back. We had this box for years, but my parents threw it away about 20 years ago. But my mom now wishes she kept the box. Like you've got your things from your dad, you know, and you need to write things down and you need to record. And she wished she'd taken a photograph of it, but she didn't. It's all these things that you, you think you'll remember it, and now she wants to ask all these questions, but there's no one left to ask. I was struggling the last few days, mostly to, to bring the memories together. Uh, but what I discussed today, uh, there are many things that happen, but it's cloudy in my brain. That's why I, I didn't put it. You've got your dad. And your dad yeah, and yes, just ask them yes it but this is a project. Yeah, this is a project. I need to dedicate time and uh, yeah. sit with them, a clear headed state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can talk to the table yeah. transcripts, yeah. And do you also, you know, they've got the, um, the cotton series fridge for the grannies. Yeah. So did the women also wear that for the bright clothes and the masks? So yeah. your grandmothers and your mothers all wore those and they still wear that? Yes, yes. And they, they still wear that. So I don't know if you've ever been on the Gulf and they give you the how to how to behave in an airplane, and there's the three three grandmothers in the mask. Very funny. They were they were uh, now it's becoming less and less. Uh, even uh, my mother and my aunt, they were it on occasions, but uh, the time when I was a uh, child, it, it was the norm. The burqa, uh, it was the norm. Yeah, yeah. And the food culture also changed a lot, right? The food? Yeah, yeah the kind yeah. of food that yeah. you used to make and eat in those days, uh, cherished. Has it changed a lot now? Like, it's um, more of fast food and that kind of thing. Fast food is definitely there. Uh, but personally, I didn't uh, observe uh, a significant change in the food since... Uh, still traditional kind of uh, Still traditional, yeah. Yeah, last night I had a meal at my mother's, and it was. Uh, yeah. You're going to give Mohammed a break now. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you very much, Mohammed, for coming. Thank you. Excellent for lecture. Day. All your information is most interesting hearing about what's happened in the past and everything else. So, we're very grateful for you coming. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I'm honored to be part of this community. Thank you.